today, it's my pleasure to introduce who is not only our new special guest on WCast, but also the first cast member of Mad World to appear exclusively, Marvin Kaplan. From what I've heard, pretty much all the comedians in Hollywood at the time wanted to be in the picture. Were you offered a role, or did you campaign an audition for one? Uh, I, I replaced Jackie Mason with the Lord. Jackie Mason. seem like a long time. When we think of it, all of a sudden it's 30 years and we're celebrating, but we're delightful. Why is it so successful? <clears throat> Basically, I think a novelty look gave people doing situation comedy and good stories. That's what I mean. And the voices. Yeah, I was going to say, and the voices have contributed a lot to it. And I think also the gags that have been inserted in the world. I'm talking now about the gimmicks, like the elephant car wash, or the elephant that they use for the shower, or the warthog underneath the sink uh, that serves as a live garbage disposal. And then we've had introduced into it a lot of new live action uh, personalities, uh, like Tony uh, Stoney Curtis, Stoney Curtis, Gary Granite, and Monroe. And uh, Ann Margaret came to the studio and sang a song for our new edition that we gave birth to the baby, which is an exciting, exciting sequence when we did that show. Exactly, yes. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Jean Vandermark. Yeah, that's an interesting Well, we tell her to do that tonight. We wrote it in the script. Now you also work with Oh, yeah. Now, you know, all those little bird characters and all those crazy little sounds of these creatures that we use in the Polarock camera and on the typewriter. And as Bill was saying, for instance, Wilma goes out to hang up a laundry. She has these little birds and she opens, she hangs them upside down and their beaks hold the, 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 the laundry and all that. Well, Mel did all of those voices. He was just one. Besides doing Bonnie. And he was Bonnie. It was Fred's constant cow. I don't know. For me, uh, I think that a lot of it is maybe what gets on the air and maybe makes it as a season, but I think most of that is fad material. Uh, and I feel that it comes and goes and will probably continue to do that. But I think to have something that is going to endure, it has to have a lot more substance than some of those, let's say, fad cartoons that are on there. The stories are so well done in the Flintstones, the voices so well cast, uh, and the, the whole makeup of the show with the introduction of these other things. To me, I think to have something endure, you have to have more than just 
It went so smoothly. I would get an idea and I would start drawing it up right away. I would start drawing. In fact, it went even like this. If I flew to New York, on the way to New York, I'd have a piece of paper on my lap and I would do a Yogi Bear story. Sketch it. Call for layouts, call for coats. Of when, I, when I went back the other way, I would do a Huckleberry Allen story. I kind of took this trip back to a few stories, turned them right over to the layout man and put them into there. And that's how they evolved. I just kept doing it. I also kept dreaming up the town. Which, see, the thing that I was avoiding it, there was too many meetings where people were supposed to come up with story companies. And the things that happened to me, there were so many people in the room. working that way instead of trying anything else. I and mean, it was working so well, why do anything else? So it just worked that way. I mean, Bill was very happy to just keep timing it, but he was so swamped with all the shows that I turned over to him. And I was swamped. Well, I had another 